Apple has been building their own custom frameworks for ages. They are locked and they are updatable. So why not do it ourselves? Today we are going to learn how to build out a custom framework and distribute it with Swift packages. So if that's something that you're interested, make sure to hit that subscribe button, open up Xcode and let's dive in. Custom frameworks. This will be so much fun. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can build your very own custom framework and then launch it as a Swift package. So let's get right into it. But before we do that, let me just remind you about Dev Factory, a 16 minute Zoom call with me personally. It is at rebelloper.com slash mentoring. Go ahead and check it out. So today we are going to take a look at how to build a custom framework. And let's just start it step by step. This will be the plan. So I will just go ahead and show you how you would do this code inside your project. Then we are going to take it further and create a Swift package, but that's uh, is going to be open. So we need to close it as a framework. So finally, we are going to create our custom framework and use it as a Swift package. How awesome is that? If that is something that you're interested, go ahead and stay tuned for this video. Also, I have linked all of the chapters down right over here so you can just jump to your interest. So what I have done here is just prepared um, a demo project. It's called Custom Framework Project. And uh, I have just added a new file right over here. It is just a static uh, function inside a static struct, inside a struct called SDK. And what I'm doing here is I'm calling this SDK do some work on my project. Now, what I will do is, uh, first of all, I will just go right over here under repositories. Of course, all I'm doing on all of these projects, I'm creating local Git repositories. So now what I'm going to do is just create a new remote on my GitHub account. And what I'm going to do is set this to private. So for example, if you are working for a company, most probably your repos will be private. Okay, so that's, that's okay. We already have that. So how can you actually share this do some work uh, as the case struct uh, with other projects? Well, uh, of course, you can just pass along this file and just move it on to the next project. But what if you just change something in here, then it won't be reflected on the other project. So this is where uh, Swift packages come in handy. And uh, just to be uh, really uh, precise, let me just uh, commit these settings right over here. Let me just move this and uh, first commit. Okay, so now our project is, has been committed. It's all inside our uh, GitHub repository. So let's create our first Swift package. And yes, you are going to also learn how to do a Swift package. So go under Xcode. You can't really see it inside on my screen right over here, but uh, just select Xcode and then go File and then New and select Package right over here. Okay, so what we are going to do is create a Swift package called Custom Framework because at the end of the day, we are going to add our custom framework into that package. So why not just name it uh, like so? So Custom Framework, really great. And I have already created these uh, uh, folders for my project. I will just drop it into the Swift package folder right over here. Make sure you create a Git repository on your Mac and a custom framework that is spelled out correctly. Let's create that. And um, basically that's it. We have created our custom framework. Now all we have to do is just do a little bit of cleanup right under here, under sources. You see we have our custom framework. And what we need to do here is just simply remove this. So let's delete this file, move to trash. Also from the tests, we need a little bit of cleanup. We want to remove this test. And then finally, because we do need to have at least one uh, file right over here, we are just going to uh, drag and drop this SDK file. So let me just search for it under the code uh, project, custom framework, custom framework project. And here is our SDK file. So what I will do is just drag and drop it right over there. There we go. And um, yeah, all I need to do is make all of these public so they will be accessible. 
when I'm going to use this uh, um, somewhere else, let's say on my project, public static function, do some work, and let's hit Command B so we can see that everything compiles correctly. And uh, well, by the way, let's just choose not Mac, but let's just choose any iOS device because I'm going to build this on an iOS device. By the way, the custom framework will be available for uh, iOS, like the devices, simulator, and also for the Mac. So everything went okay with this part. So next up, what we want to do is create our custom framework. So let's just go under repositories and let's create a new custom framework remote for that. It will be public because yes, I do need to have access to this custom framework Swift package and then select uh, your GitHub account and then let's create that. And uh, yeah, uh, now all we need to do is just go ahead under source control, just uh, commit our files. These are the changes. I'm just make this first commit, uh, push to remote, commit free files. That's great. And now finally, we need to, to tag this latest commit. So tag main, uh, I'm just going to go 0.0.1. .0 Let's create that. And uh, under source control, again, we want to push our uh, changes, including the tags. Uh, yeah, only the tags were changed, but that is how you would do that. So now let's just take a look at our GitHub repository. And you can see we have one tag available. So we can just grab this HTTPS link for our custom framework. So I just copied that. And let's just go back to our Xcode project. Uh, it's this one. And let's select our project, package dependencies, hit the plus right over there and paste that uh, file over there up to next major version. That's perfectly fine with me. Add package. And it's going to just pull down our custom framework Swift package. And uh, if everything went okay, now I can just use this custom frameworks uh, functions uh, right over here from the SDK. I can just use do some from. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to comment all of this out like it didn't even exist. And right over here, uh, as you can see now, uh, if we hit Command B, we will have an error. Cannot find SDK in scope. That's uh, perfectly fine. Now we are just going to import our custom framework. Okay, let's see that. And if I hit Command R to build and run again, uh, we should see, yes, doing some work. That's perfectly what I needed. So uh, what you could do right now is that you could just uh, import this package, depend this package dependency into all of your project. But there's a problem here. Uh, one problem that is solving is that, okay, now you have, and you can have access to the latest version of these uh, functions, the do some work function or whatever you put into your Swift package, but it is open. That is the, a huge thing because maybe if you're working for a company, they don't want uh, the public to know what this do some work does. And uh, first of all, it is on GitHub, so you can check it out. Uh, second of all, if anybody which can uh, download this custom uh, framework Swift package, can access and take a look at your actual code. So how do we hide it? So what we need to do, first of all, uh, all I want to do is just save uh, this, these changes. So why don't we just commit and just add in here like Swift package added. So that's our Swift package added. Let's commit these three files and uh, that's, that's okay. So uh, what we need to do is create a framework that will hold this do some work uh, SDK struct. Uh, well, uh, the struct that uh, contains the do some work function and uh, close it and then uh, put it into a Swift package so it will be available in our custom framework project. So finally, we have come to the point where we are going to create our custom uh, framework. So uh, under, uh, so make sure that you select Xcode under file, let's create a new and uh, what we uh, actually uh, need is to create a new project 
And the right over here, when you are selecting a new project, let me just reframe uh, this, make sure that you select framework. And uh, yeah, iOS is perfectly fine. Select framework for this. Let's click on next here and let's name our framework. Now the framework will have the same name actually as our um, Swift package that we have created. And we will deal with naming, uh, uh, like the naming uh, problem later on when we are going to save this as a private repo on uh, uh, GitHub. But just for now, uh, just custom frame work will be perfect. So custom framework is this. And um, yeah, that looks really nice. Let's click on next. And uh, let's select our framework folder. This is where I want to put it. Make sure that you create a Git repository on your Mac. Click on create right over there. And it has been created. Okay, that's fine. So what do we do? Well, uh, what we want to do is just add our files uh, right over here under custom framework. And uh, I have already created my SDK version with a little bit more to it, uh, uh, pre-advanced, and that is under resources. Uh, if you download, if you click the link in the description, you will be able to download the resources to all of my YouTube videos, including this one. And uh, if you search for this one, you will find that we have two files here, one with an sdk.swift and another one that we are going to take a look at later. Uh, now, what we want to do is just drag and drop this sdk swift file. Make sure that you copy items if needed and create groups is checked and also the target is checked. So let's click on finish right over here. Let's take a look at this SDK file that I have added in here because uh, it's a little bit more complicated than the usual one. And I want to go through it uh, so you better understand what this actually uh, does. So as you can see, we already have our public struct SDK and then we have this public static function do some work. But uh, this as the plan is, we'll be able to, so we will be able to download it and anybody will be able to download it as a Swift package. So they will be able to access it. They will not be able to read your actual code, but they will be able to use it. So how to prevent that actually, because maybe you want only certain people to use this uh, application of do some work. Well, here comes the API key. So let's say you are going to distribute some API keys among your coworkers or whoever you choose to. And because this struct is already inside the framework, nobody will see this, only you will see this. So this is really cool because then we can just create this array of API keys right over here and just check against this array. And basically this is what the check API key is. It is just going to let us know is this a valid API key that we provide. And if it is, then we are okay to go. We can just print out to do some work. Where do we add this API key? Well, under the configure with this API key. And basically what we are doing is having a static variable of is API key uh, set to false. And if this API key is inside the API keys array, then we're just going to set this to true. Therefore, again, uh, we are going to do some work. Okay, so that's kind of the gist of it. As you can see also, I have this set to private, so it will not be accessible throughout other uh, structs or classes uh, outside of the struct SDK. So yeah, that's, that's uh, really nice. But the most important part here is that the struct is public and the configure and the do some work functions are also public. Uh, not the other ones because yeah, maybe you will override it. Yeah, let us not uh, get uh, that into uh, the hands of other developers. Okay, so that's our struct for our SDK. So um, what do we have to do now? Well, actually what we need to do is just, uh, let's take a look at how this looks like inside our code project. So we have our custom framework. And what we need to do right now is create actually the framework that we are going to uh, uh, add in 
to the Swift package. But uh, before we do that, let me just uh, save this so and uh, take care of the naming uh, slack, uh, clash there. So what I will do is just go under source control. Well, actually not under source control, right over here, repositories. And uh, now let's create a new custom framework remote. But uh, after I select GitHub, the repository name, because this is already been taken, you know, the Swift package, I'm just going to go underscore and build. So this is where I'm going to build my custom framework. And this time around, I'm going to set this to private. So nobody will have access to this because if they do, they will be able to read this. Okay, so uh, let's create that. And uh, after that, I'm just uh, going to go under source control, commit and commit the changes. And that is our first commit or uh, whatever you can just add in here SDK created or something uh, uh, more readable and uh, that's it so now we have all of these really tucked away on github so they are safe now it's time to create our SDK that we are uh, sorry the framework that we are going to put into our swift package so uh, let me just go ahead and uh, go into our folder right over here so what we are going to do is create a build folder and in those build folders, we are going to create three archives, one for iOS, another one for the simulator, and the third one for macOS. And once we do have those three, we are going to combine them into our framework. And then we are just simply going to uh, add that into our uh, Swift package with a simple drag and drop. Okay, so how do we do that? Well. Here, uh, here we are going to do some really magic inside the terminal. So uh, here we go. I just opened up the terminal and what you want to do is just navigate to the root folder of your uh, back, uh, uh, framework. So type in CD and the space and let's just go to the finder. And what you want to do is just drag the root folder. So here is our Excel project just drag and drop it right over there okay uh, let's hit return so we are inside our custom framework so there is another file inside the resources that we have downloaded let's take a look at that so under resources we have a create a framework helpers so let's open up this create a framework helpers file and uh, it's right over here there's a lot of text that you are not going to understand immediately, but I will just make this a little bit larger and uh, explain to you what all of this does. And then we are going to copy and paste it into the simulator. Okay. So first of all, as I told you, we need to create an archive for iOS simulator and for Mac OS. Now, uh, these are kind of the same. So let's go through uh, these lines one by line. So first of all, we are going to create an archive for the screen of framework name. Now you want to change whatever you see right over here, the framework name to the actual framework name that you are going to add in here. And that is in our case, it is custom framework. So what we would do is just copy out a uh, custom framework and just paste it right over here. Also, configuration is released, a platform, iOS. And then right over here, we are going to create a build folder, as you can see. And then, uh, of course, we need to change framework name into custom framework. In our case, uh, your case depends on your name of your framework. And then uh, we want to set skip install to no and then uh, build library for distribution, yes. So basically we are going to do all of these for the simulator and for macOS also. So uh, finally, when we do these three, and uh, I'm going to do this uh, just one after the other, like in one go. But you could just uh, copy out these one liners one by one, or just copy out these chunks, or you could just go ahead and I have here all in one, just copy out these. Make sure that you also change the framework name on these. But before we do that, there is also one last thing. We want to create the framework from these free archives. And basically what we are going to do is grab these free archives and create our Xcode framework from it. Make sure again, you change the framework name uh, appropriately to your framework name. And basically that's it. Now here is the, the whole code 
like uh, what you want to copy and paste. And uh, I have already prepared one for myself that uh, replaces the framework name so we don't waste time on that. So it's right over here. And then, uh, as you can see, it says custom framework and all of that. What I'm going to do is just copy all of this out. Make sure that you copy it out. And then let's just go back to our uh, terminal. Uh, terminal, there we go. And of course, we need to be inside the custom frameworks folder and just paste it in. Now you see it is just highlighting everything into white. Make sure that you don't have any extra uh, spaces right over here. I, I did have those and uh, it wasn't really working. Make sure that it looks exactly the same like it is right over here. So now when I'm going to hit return, there will be a lot of things going on. And I will hit return and I will just show you what has been created after we just uh, make sure that everything is okay. Great. So let's take a look at our finder and what we have built. So uh, let's just go into code, framework, custom framework. And now a new build uh, folder has been popped up. And also we have our free archives. Uh, you can take a look at the contents of the archives. Uh, it doesn't really matter for uh, this scope of the project, but we have also created our custom framework dot XC framework which has all of these uh, archives. It's really, really great. So finally, we are able to drag this into our uh, Swift package. So let's go into Xcode and navigate to our package, actually, Swift package that we have created. And uh, first of all, uh, we need to create some uh, changes into the package manifest. And that's also inside our text editor file. And uh, what we did here is just what we are going to do here is have a platform of for Mac OS and iOS. So let me just copy it out. Uh, yeah, if you are going to copy all of this out, again, change the framework name. So uh, let's just copy all of this out and then paste it right over here. Okay, so that's one change. And the other change is the targets. So we just copy out this array of targets and just replace it right over here. So uh, you will see that we have the binary target and then we have our framework name. So yes, I do need to change that to custom framework right over here and also custom framework right over here. So as you can see, the path to our custom framework here is sources custom framework. So actually what I need to do is remove this folder. So why would just delete that, move to trash, and uh, I will just drag and drop this custom framework right over here. Yes, and as you can see now we have this really nice icon for our custom framework. Next up, what we want to do is uh, commit. So let's just go, and as you can see, you know, all of these files will be committed. Uh, let's just uh, name this like uh, version 0.0.2, okay? And let's commit this. So this is kind of the description of what has been changed for the custom framework. Now this will be, again, available for all to see because it's the message for our commit, but the custom framework contents will not be available. And finally, what we need to do is just go and tag this. And currently the latest tag is 0.0.1. So let's just tag our main to 0.0.2 and let's create that tag. And also under source control, push it, make sure you include check, uh, tags is checked and push that up. Okay, now it's time to just go ahead and select our other project. Uh, and that is our custom framework project that we are using it in. And uh, as you can see now, it's just version 001 uh, and under file uh, packages, update to latest package versions, it will update to the latest package version. As you can see now, if I just go in there, it's, it's nothing, so we cannot see it, which is really, really great. But uh, if I just go ahead and say, do some work, uh, let me just uh, build and run. Uh, oh, before we do that, uh, before I do some work, uh, let's hit Command B so we can see that everything has succeeded. Yes, 
So what we want to do is uh, actually uh, build and run. And uh, if I'm correct, it will say yes please provide a valid API key because we didn't provide any. So uh, let's just provide one sdk.configure uh, configure and uh, auto completion is uh, failing me here API key. And uh, let's just uh, take a look at the valid API keys. Uh, most probably you will uh, get this and uh, SDK Okay, so uh, let's just see what's going on here because it seems that we do not have access to that. So custom framework, let's just take a look at our custom framework. Okay, that's our SDK. And now under SDK, uh, configure API key. Well, actually it should be available. Uh, actually, uh, let's see, uh, private key one, two, three. Configure API key, private key. One, two, three. Okay, let's hit command B. Let's see. SDK has no member. Well, let's just see. Jump to definition. Oh, most probably we need to uh, uh, clean our build folder. So clean a build folder. Okay, let's hit command B. Build has succeeded. Yes, the build folder was to blame. And now if I just uh, build and run, uh, we will see that yes, doing some work because the private API private API key has been added correctly. So let's just remove, uh, let's say private key. And in this case, uh, because it's not a valid API key, we will say, please provide a valid API key. So we will not do the work. Uh, let's uh, move that back. So everything is okay. And uh, yeah, now you know how you can create your very own custom framework, which is really, really daunting. But you know what is still also daunting? multi-threading in iOS. So if you want to learn about Grand Center Dispatch and Demystified, go ahead and check out this video right over here.